Today, I'm going to explain a comedy and horror film called Jennifer's Body. Anita Lesnicki, known to people as Needy, is an alleged violent murderer currently locked up in a correctional facility. Needy is known for her alleged crimes and receives hundreds of letters every day from people cursing her to hell or begging her to accept Jesus Christ into her heart. Innocent or not, the scars on her body tell a different story. After kicking a doctor on the chest at the cafeteria, Needy is sent to solitary confinement. She wasn't always like this. Believe it or not, there was a time when she was considered normal. Enclosed in darkness, Needy thinks about the past several months. She came from Devil's Kettle, Minnesota. The town is named after a local waterfall. The thing is nobody knows where the water goes. One time, a group of scientists dropped a bucket of red balls into the whirlpool, but nothing ever resurfaced. Here, in this little town where almost nothing interesting ever happens is where it all went down. Needy is living a relatively normal teenage life. Even though she's considered as the local dork, she has a boyfriend named Chip and is best friends with the hottest girl in school, Jennifer Check. Jen and Needy were playmates when they were young and they've been inseparable ever since. After a school event, Jen invites Needy to watch an indie rock band called Low Shoulder who's performing at the local dive bar, Melody Lane. Later that night, Needy hangs out with Chip in her bedroom as she chooses an outfit for the rock show. Chip feels weirded out by their friendship and accuses her of doing anything that Jen tells her to do. She defends this but deep down inside her, she knows this isn't entirely true. She tries to change the topic and makes out with her boyfriend on the bed, but they're interrupted as Jen arrives. Jen teases Chip for being jealous because he wasn't invited as she and Needy get into her car. They arrive at Melody Lane, which is more of a bar instead of a club. The bar is full for the night and they see some of their schoolmates, the foreign exchange student, Ahmet, and Craig, from the football team whom Jen turns down. At the counter, they're approached by officer in training, Roman, a guy with who Jen has been having an on and off affair, but she turns him down too. Jen turns Needy's attention to the band as they're setting up on the stage. She drags her nerdy best friend and introduces themselves to the lead singer, Nikolai Wolf. Jen flirts with Nikolai and offers to buy him a drink which he happily accepts. As Jen goes to get some drinks, Needy stays behind and overhears the conversation between Nikolai and their bassist, Dirk. Nikolai thinks that Jen is the one telling his friend that she's definitely a virgin, a girl who likes to put it out but never puts it in. Needy confronts Nikolai and tells him that he's a sleazy creep. She goes to Jen and tells her that Nikolai only wants her because he thinks she's a virgin. Jen thinks this is crazy because she isn't even a backdoor virgin anymore thanks to Roman. Just then, the band starts playing and they watch and listen as they open with their first song. Jen is hopeless and feels giddy about the lead singer, despite the remarks, and holds Needy's hand. Needy feels happy seeing her friend happy, but she lets go of her hand, feeling insecure and thinking that she'll never match up to her pretty and popular best friend. At the corner of her eye, Needy spots a fire starting near the stage. The curtains instantly catch fire and spread across the ceiling, bringing down some of the decorations. The band stops playing as the whole bar quickly goes up in flames. A stampede occurs as Needy and Jen stand in the room, hearing the cracking of bones. A pile of wood falls down, crushing some of their schoolmates as they both watch in horror. Needy snaps out and drags Jen into the bathroom. They escape through one of the windows and reach the parking lot. She comforts Jen who looks shocked and dazed. Nikolai turns up from nowhere and hands Jen a suspicious drink. He insists that the girls go into his van, but Needy refuses. Jen, on the other hand, takes the drink and goes with Nikolai. Needy calls after her best friend but Jen refuses to listen. As she watches Jen go inside the van, Needy knows something bad is about to happen. Meanwhile, Melody Lane is burned to the ground. Needy makes it home and calls Chip and tells him about what happened. Suddenly, her doorbell rings. She keeps Chip on the phone as she goes down to investigate, but when she opens the door, nobody's there. Needy hangs up the phone and then spots a shadow in the hallway. She slowly walks to the door and opens it, but the closet is empty too. She goes into the kitchen to close the leaking faucet and turns to face Jen, all bloody and beaten in her outfit. She tries to get some sense of what happened to her, but her best friend can only reply in animalistic grunts. Jen goes to the fridge and starts eating their food like a wild animal. Needy tries to stop her, but she suddenly starts retching and vomits a pool of black, spiky liquid on the linoleum. She checks Jen's wrist and feels almost no pulse. Needy runs to the hallway to call for help, but Jen stops her and pins her to the wall. She asks her if she's scared, to which Needy nods and leans to breathe on her neck. She drops her to the floor and escapes through the main door. 
Needy is left mortified at what happened. The next morning at school, Needy is shocked to see Jen alive and well. Jen still looked the same, but she acted as if nothing happened last night and is being indifferent. Needy knows that what happened yesterday was real because she spent the whole night scrubbing the vomit off the floor. Jen dismisses her concerns and insists that she's just being overdramatic. Just then, their teacher with a prosthetic hand, Mr. Rablewski, comes in to announce the grim news. After class, Needy meets Chip in the hallway and tells him about what happened with Jen last night. Colin Gray, the high school's local goth, approaches her to check in on her after yesterday's fire. Chip teases his girlfriend, but Needy reassures him that he's got nothing to worry about. Meanwhile, Jen approaches Jonas Kozel, one of Craig's best friends, who's mourning in the middle of their football field. Jen convinces him to go with her to the woods because Craig would have wanted the two of them together. As they make out in the woods, animals start to surround them. Jonas feels weirded out, but Jen distracts him by taking her shirt off. She rips his jersey off and starts unzipping his pants. She then whispers to him that she's going to see his best friend real soon. She pushes him against a tree, and the last thing Jonas sees is Jen's eyes turning black and her open mouth revealing her razor-sharp teeth, ready to cut into his flesh. Jonas's screams reach the school's parking lot and alert their teacher, Mr. Rablewski. Feeling suspicious, he goes into the woods and finds Jonas's disemboweled dead body. Back at home, Needy prepares a sandwich for her mom as she listens to the radio. Since the fire, Nikolai's band, Low Shoulder, has been getting tons of positive publicity. As they talk over their meal, Jonas is taken out of the woods through a body bag by the police, while the killer, Jen, takes a bath at a nearby lake, washing away all the evidence of her bloody feast. Later that night, Jen is on the phone with Needy telling her about her perfect day. After killing Jonas, she finds herself transformed, feeling no pain, even burning her own tongue. Needy gets another call and it's her boyfriend, Chip. Needy hangs up on Jen and meets with Chip at McCullum Park. He tells her that the police are over at Kozel's house and that Jonas was found dead in the woods. Needy says that with the fire and the killing, it can't be a coincidence. Chip is horrified but reassures her that things will get better. A month after the fire and the killing of Jonas Kozel, the town found its way to slowly heal. The national news picked up the tragedies of Devil Kettle and milked it as much as they could. Low Shoulder has gotten even bigger, capitalizing on their part of the fire and has made their song the unofficial theme song of unity and healing for the town. Soon enough, Mr. Roleski announces that Low Shoulder is holding a charity benefit for the victims of the fire. Needy calls them out for being crass, but is attacked by her classmates. After class is dismissed, Needy walks with Jen, pointing out that she looks pale and haggard. Jen says that it's probably wearing off. Before Needy could ask further, their conversation is interrupted by Colin, who asks Jen out on a date. Jen turns him down initially, but Needy insists that he's a cool guy. Suddenly, Jen gets an idea. She calls him back and tells him to meet at her house and watch a movie. Chip joins them in the hallway and feels weird that Colin is talking to his girlfriend again, but Needy tells him that he was only asking Jen out on a date. Later that night, Needy hangs out with Chip in his bedroom. They start making out and undressing each other. On the other side of town, Colin drives up to an empty neighborhood. He stops at the address that Jen gave him and enters the unfinished house through the back. He explores around the house, looking for Jen, and finally finds her in a room filled with candles. She takes off her jacket and they start making out. The sight of Rat stops Colin, but she lures him back and takes off his pants. Suddenly, Jen's eyes turn dark as approaches a terrified Colin. She breaks his bones and pins him down on the floor and starts to devour his soul. Meanwhile, Chip and Needy are making love when she spots the leaking blood on the ceiling and sees Jonas dead in the room together with a demonic gem. She gasps in horror until Chip stops, concerned for his girlfriend. Back at the house, Colin is dead with his intestines out as Jen eats the rest of his insides. Needy runs out of Chip's house and drives her way home crying. She almost runs over Jen on the highway, but she swerves to the right just in time. When she stops, she looks around for Jen, but she's nowhere to be found. Something jumps on her windshield, cracking the glass, and it's her best friend. Needy screams as Jen gets off her car and she drives the other way home. Needy reaches her house and screams for her mom. Finding herself alone, she sobs in the living room. She thinks about Jen and blames herself for letting her into the van. She gets up and goes into her bedroom and screams when she finds Jen laying next to her. Jen calms her down and begins kissing her. Feeling confused, Needy kisses her back, and the two make out briefly on her bed. Needy stops and freaks out, feeling more complicated than ever. She threatens to call the police, but Jen reminds her that she has the cops in her back pocket. Jen then tells her about what really happened to her that night of the fire. 
After she got into the truck, the guys drove her to the falls. She saw all the occult and supernatural books in their van and thinking that they're sexual offenders, she insists that she's a virgin, so they should let her go and get someone else who's more experienced. Unbeknownst to her, this is what they guys exactly need. When they reach the falls, Jen tried to escape but it's really dark so Nikolai caught her immediately. The guys carried her near the falls and tied her up as they prepared for the ritual. Dirk handed Nikolai a piece of paper and a knife. They then started the ritual. It turned out, they're sacrificing a virgin to the devil so that the devil in turn can grant them fame and success as a band. Jen begs for her life, but the guys' minds are set. Nikolai held up the knife and stabbed her multiple times before tossing the knife into the waterfall hole. Back at Needy's room, Jen finishes telling the story. She tells Needy that the stab should have killed her, but they didn't. Jen made her way back to Needy, feeling hungry for blood, but she didn't have it in her to kill her friend. On her way home, Jen approaches Ahmed who's just leaving the scene of the fire, and makes him her first victim. Jen tells a shocked Needy that when she's eaten in full, she's unkillable. She can now withstand virtually any injury without pain and heal instantly. Needy brings up their encounter in her car, but Jen quickly dismisses it. She then demands Jen to leave and she does so by jumping through Needy's second floor bedroom window. Needy attends Colin's burial the next morning. She has to stop Jen in any way she can. She starts researching about demons in the occult and a way to stop her friend from killing any more boys. Chip meets up with her at school and brings up the school dance. She tells him that they shouldn't go to the dance at all, but he's really more concerned about behavior. They go to a quieter place and Needy finally tells Chip the truth about Jen. It turns out that Nikolai made a mistake when they sacrificed Jen because she wasn't a complete virgin anymore since junior high. According to Needy's research, if the human sacrifice is impure, the result may still be attained, but the demon will remain in the host's body who will continue to feed its thirst for blood. Chip refuses to believe her which prompts Needy to break up with him. As the whole school prepares for the dance, Needy worries about Jen's next victim. At Chip's house, his mother gives him a can of pepper spray which he takes hesitantly. Meanwhile, Jen is wearing down, her hair is falling out, and her skin is breaking out. She needs to take her next victim soon. Needy arrives at the dance and keeps an eye out for Jen. Meanwhile, Chip is walking through the park to get to school when he's stopped by Jen. She lures him to the trees, saying that she wants to talk about Needy. She then lies to Chip, telling him that the reason Needy was so broken up over Colin's death was because they were hooking up on a semi-regular basis. Jen starts flirting with Chip, lying to him that she's liked him all along, and then starts kissing him. They start making out under the trees until Chip suggests they go somewhere else. Back at school, Needy watches in anger as she watches Low Shoulder open with their song. Suddenly, she realizes why Jen hasn't appeared all night. She's after Chip. Needy runs over to Chip's house and learns that he left 20 minutes ago. She then runs to the park, knowing he would have gone through there. Meanwhile, Jen takes Chip to an abandoned community pool. They sit at the edge of the pool and start kissing again. But Chip pulls back, saying that it feels weird. This angers Jen and she pushes him to the water and starts dragging and hitting up against the tiled walls. Needy arrives just in time and finds Jen eating her boyfriend's neck. She jumps into the pool and tries to drown her former friend. She goes back to Chip, who's still alive but bleeding, and tosses her the pepper spray. Jen resurfaces from the water and she sprays the bottle at her. She screams and vomits black puke all over them. Jen starts levitating and steps outside the pool. Needy and Chip get out of the pool. Needy finally confronts Jen, telling her that she was never a good friend. Jen always wants what she wants. Needy accuses her of being insecure and tells her that she's no longer socially relevant. Jen screams at her and threatens to eat her soul, but when she lunges towards her, Chip brings up the broken pool cleaner and stabs her in the torso. She pulls out the pole, in pain but still alive, and walks away from her former friend. Needy then comforts Chip. They apologize to each other and declare their love for each other, but it's too late. Chip has been bleeding too fast and has lost a lot of blood. He slowly fades away and dies as Needy sobs by his side. Needy goes back home in her torn and ruined dress. She has nothing to live for now, but she can still do something right. She's going to stop Jen no matter what. She cleans herself up and marches her way to Jen's house. From Jen's bedroom window, Needy can see her worn and weak. She breaks into her window and lunges at her but Jen avoids her attack. Needy pins her down on the bed and tries to strangle her to death but she bites her on the neck. Needy takes out a box cutter and crosses out her stomach. Jen starts levitating from the bed in a struggle midair. Needy grabs their friendship necklace and this stuns Jen, prompting her to fall back to the bed. As much as she hated Needy, she never really thought she would be the one to end their friendship. 
Mimi falls back to the bed and stabs the box cutter deep into her heart. She watches as Jen takes her final breath, taking in the fact that she had just killed her former best friend. Suddenly, the lights turn on and Jen's mom runs into the room, cradling her dead daughter. At the correctional facility, Mimi is still in solitary confinement and everything is going according to plan. She's not the same Mimi anymore because when you get bitten by a demon and you live, you absorb some of the demon's abilities. She lands down from her meditation and breaks down the facility's walls and escapes by tearing the fence. As she walks down the road, she notices a small creek nearby full of red balls and takes the knife that Nikolai used to stab Jen. It seems like everything at Devil's Kettle eventually resurfaces. As morning breaks, she flags down a car and hitches a ride towards the east in Madison. She tells the driver she's following this rock band because it's going to be their last show tonight. Later on, the police find all the members of Low Shoulder Dead in their hotel room. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.